things. Now, what I think we have today, we definitely have a lot of people who don't care about God's word and God's law. And that's evident. And there, a lot of them are ignorant. They've been brainwashed by the world. Maybe you can say they have some good intentions, but the fact of the matter still remains that these people really don't care that much about God's word. Because if they did, they wouldn't be letting the most abominable filth just be accepted and tolerated and promoted. There'd be a lot, be a lot more language against some of the worst, disgusting, vile things that can happen on this earth. There'd be a lot more uh, uh, opposition to that type of wickedness. So that's just evident. I mean, when you can, when you can just, when people can just accept and tolerate the most stomach-turning, disgusting, vile things that can just be done out in public and just be okay with that. And, oh, we don't want to offend anybody. Oh, I don't want, I'm supposed to love everybody. I'm not supposed to stand up and make any judgment because, you know, I'm not supposed to judge. They don't love God's law. They don't even know God's law, let alone love it. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. It's the wicked man that just died is wicked. And this is what the Bible is talking about. We're going to see here in Ephesians chapter 6. He's just one example. He's not the only one. He's one of many. But the Bible warns us about spiritual wickedness in high places in the book of Ephesians chapter number 6. Look at verse number 11. The Bible says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. High places are positions of power. There is a lot of spiritual wickedness in high places in this world, not just in this country, in the world. Global, look at how many global leaders are there. What global leader comes to the mind as, hey, that's actually a good guy? I can't think of one. I mean, you hear about Putin and, you know, the, the, I forget the guy's name in Canada, that effeminate little pansy guy with Trudeau, right? Yeah. Trudeau and, and, you know, we've got, we've got Trump. Oh yeah. Trump came as he's an answer to prayer of God. Yeah. Right. That greedy, pompous, proud, full of himself. Love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. That's more the judgment of God than, than an answer to prayer. I'm sorry. But um, there is spiritual wickedness in high places, and we need to recognize it as such. And, and George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush and Bill Clinton, I don't care if they have an R or a D after their name. They're all playing the same game. They're all part of the same clubs and the same groups. They're all buddy-buddy with each other. You've got John Kerry and you've got George Bush, both members of the Skull and Bones. They're both brothers in their fraternal order. They're both there for each other. They don't care about the R or the D or the principles or anything like that. They care about their power. They care about the, their wickedness, ultimately, is what it boils down to. And they're, gonna, they're not going to tell you you know, just come straight out and just be like, yeah, I'm real wicked, right? So what I've been hearing about the, you know, oh, he was such a nice guy. Oh, he was real funny. You know what? You know what's funny about that or interesting about that? John Wayne Gacy's neighbors said the same thing. Oh, yeah, he's real friendly. Oh, he's really good with the kids. Oh, he's real funny. He's real personable. He was a great neighbor. Yeah, except he, he sodomized and murdered young men. He was wicked. He was an animal. He was vile and refuse and disgusting. But he hid that part the best he could. And the spiritual wickedness in high places, guess what? They're trying to hide that part from you. So sure, they could come across. Oh, yeah. He, I, heard, I heard someone on the radio say today, he didn't hate anybody. 
Well, you already got something wrong with you then because you're just a liar. You say you've never, he's never hated anyone in his life. That's just weird. Who's never hated anybody in their entire life? I'm not saying you go around and just hate everybody, but I mean, just. The person that even said that probably would say, well, yeah, I hate Saddam Hussein. Uh, but George H.W. Bush, he loved Saddam Hussein, right? It's a big love fest. He's dropping bombs on the people of Iraq. Uh, 